Amen. All set? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. I'd like to call this meeting to order Tuesday, March the 9th. Um, welcome again. It's it's nice to see so many people in the room. It's, uh, it's a lot of smiles, a lot of optimism, and certainly welcome to the ones at home. Maybe a good thing you're there because of the, we're running out of room in here, but it's, it's nice. Um, a little late just because we've been visiting. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is um, a bit somber, but I want to pay tribute to a, a former warden. Today we remember Matthew Schaefer passed away on March the 1st. Matt was elected warden of the County of Elgin in 1976 at the age of 34, making him one of the youngest to ever serve as warden. Uh, it's, you know, 1976, I was married in 1975, and it was a different world then. Our first TV was a, was a black and white TV, and things like microwaves, cell phones weren't even invented. So it's, it was a different world at the county at that time. Matt served on Elton County Council as Reeve and Deputy Reeve of the Township of Bam from 1973 to 1976. He served many community organizations in Bam over the years, always proud to attend the warden's annual banquet and other county events. I think that's the last time I saw Matt was at uh, your uh, banquet, Duncan, two years ago. On behalf of um, Elgin County Council, I express my condolences to Matthew's family and to the municipality of BAM. His service will not be forgotten. We will now observe a moment of silence in his honor. So please rise if you're able. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Warden, uh, if I may, through you to uh, counselors and to uh, staff of the County of Elgin, uh, on behalf of the family, I'd like to thank you for the tribute uh, applied to uh, Uncle Matt and uh, uh, all the, uh, the thoughts are, are well appreciated. The flowers that were sent were very much appreciated. And so, again, just on behalf of the family, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Uh, it, uh, it was a good man. Keep it simple, it was a good man. Um, we have a couple of people to introduce today, new employees. Jeff and Rybrock. Jeff, welcome. Um, some of us have already met, them, met you. Please, if you'd like to, I, I did warn him earlier to keep his speech short, but Jeff, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, Glad to have you. you. Thank you, Mr. Warden, members of council. Um, I'm happy to be here, part of Elgin, part of the team. Um, I uh, come from a emergency management background and a fire background, so I've uh, been talking with many of the member municipalities so far about some of the emergency planning needs and uh, spoken to, to a large number of the fire chiefs about uh, being able to move some of the fire training forward and in a more unified manner and being able to put some services in Algon County that uh, will serve all of the municipalities in, uh, in a positive way. So happy to be here, happy to be part of the team. Thank you, Jeff, appreciate those comments. And we have uh, Christine. Christine's our new administrator down at Terrace Lodge and I just met her a couple of minutes ago, but uh, Christine, welcome. Thank you. Um, so my name is Christine Leonard and I come from the Niagara area. I've been working in seniors care for 40 years and uh, I just thought I would uh, move this way. My daughter is son-in-law and two grandchildren live in St. Thomas and so it was an opportunity for me to be closer to my grandchildren as well. So I'm happy to join Michelle and uh, to work together for Terrace Lodge at such an exciting time. Well, on behalf of council, welcome, and, and moving closer to grandkids is pretty good medicine, so. Yes. <laughs> you all the best, both of you. Thank you. All right, we have some um, 
I guess disclosure pecuniary interest. Do I see any? I better check the screen here. Okay, there's none. Um, adoption of minutes. I guess I forgot that. Has so everyone read the minutes? If there's no errors or admissions, I'd entertain a motion to receive them. Move, Mr. Moved by Councillor Menel, second by McPhail. Uh, please call the vote. Deputy Warden Menel. Yes. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Councillor Purcell. Yes. Councillor Martin. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor French. Yes. Councillor Jaguar. Yes. Councillor Ketchbaugh. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. Nine zero. The motion is carried. Thank you. And we do have a delegation this morning. Uh, Shirley Sherman, Long Term Care Homes. <clears throat> Does she join us? There's. I see it on the. Shirley, if you're here, you have the floor. Welcome. Yes, thank you. I'm here, but um, it says that uh, access to camera not allowed. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you. Okay. All right, and I appreciate you giving me a few minutes. I'm Shirley Sherman. I live in Elmer. 12 years ago, I retired from long-term care. I was a charge nurse, a registered nurse at a private sector long-term care home in St. Thomas. The last three years, I worked part-time. Um, and having seen an article in the Elmer Express read the possibility of council uh, divesting of some of the assets that are long-term care homes, I determined I had to speak up. And I read the Strategy Corps report. It seems most of the difficulties of retention of your homes are within that report. I understand you have not followed all these recommendations and I'm here to beg you to never divest of your assets. As I read it, the purpose of the service slash municipal board for long-term care administration would be to get the financials trimmed to such an extent that the homes would be attractive to a private sector buyer. I understand we're talking of two of the three homes. And I had to notice so much money to be spent with no patient care uh, needs in, would be in, spent with that funding. Also, no longer the need for the board, the directors and the staff, nor the corporation form for the savings would result. However, page 23 left column does finally admit for the first time that the facilities service levels would be affected as previous references claim to maintain quality levels of care. The report encourages council to seek partnering with a private sector long-term care company for expertise in reducing per bed costs and gave an example of a seeming successful model. I beg you never to enter into this kind of uh, partnership. The last year has been devastating to residents and families of long-term care, as you all know, and we are thankful that Elgin County congregate living places have not been severely adversely affected with deaths and cases. However, recently there was a tragedy in Oxford. Throughout the year, I have followed the unconscionable statistics, the suffering and grief of residents and their families, and observed the parts of the sector worst affected, the private sector of long-term care. The virus has revealed the deficiencies of staffing policy, which has been known to each relevant provincial government department for a very long time. Years and years of effort to insist on reform have gone unanswered, unacknowledged. Regulations, standards required by inspe and inspections required by various government departments were not enforced, fell off, and findings of inspections that were carried out were not rectified. If the existing regulations of the Ministry of Health, of Labour, and various Department of Health, etc., had been followed, this history would not be. I can provide statistics to back up the above statements. Therefore, I beg you not to be in partnership with any for profit company. If you ever consider this, take time to research the company, determine the track record of resident care of working conditions for the staff. You will be shocked with your findings. Perhaps you already have an R. I was saddened when just prior to the pandemic declaration, the current government announced cuts to long-term care funding. I saw what it would cost Elgin County and that was so unfair. 
your homes have an excellent reputation in the community. And to maintain that, you would have to provide more funds so he had done nothing to deserve the burden and have done so much to provide for and ensure that the homes are to be proud of. I see long-term care as existing with bare bones. Bare bones, no fat to trim, as I heard the Premier say there was. The reports of long-term care difficulties recalls memory that I and the staff of all categories dealt with daily. Steadily over the years, the acuity and complexity of the health of the residents increased with no adjustment of staffing ratios, despite adhering to ministry requirements of charting for dollars. Even over the years, as I've met staff, I worked within the community. They had told me how it was so much worse than when I was there giving me a look that said I could not imagine. When there were flu outbreaks, we were never fr f afraid to come to work. We knew we'd get the flu, we knew we'd get better, and we'd come back to work. But of course now I have been so worried for staff as this virus can be an illness with extended and or lifelong consequences. Thank you for your time and I wish you well with managing the budget and I'm available for any questions if you wish. <clears throat> Sorry about the video. Just don't allow me on. Okay, Shirley, thank you for the presentation. I'll open the floor for any councillors who have questions. Uh, Councillor Mental, go ahead. Just a comment, uh, Mr. Warden. And Shirley, uh, your concerns are also the concerns of this county council. Uh, the provincial average, I believe, is about two and a half hours per resident. And we, uh, and they, I think the province since COVID hit has wants to move that up to four hours. We are very close to that four hours in, in Elgin and, and with our homes. And that's why we're subsidizing the province by the tune of about $5 million. Yes. I, yes. I talked to Jeff Yurick and certainly he indicated that the province is willing to uh, bring the level of care up over a period of years. And certainly that would change the equation in, in uh, looking down the road. So. Once we see that uh, level of care go up um, and our, there's, their, uh, our revenues to the homes uh, increase, that may change that picture. So we, I, I, I'm not in favor of making a decision until we see that. Further comments? Yes, at one time, 2.5 would have been just ideal. And over the, you know, uh, so the, demand has increased, especially with the extra precautions needed with COVID. And the and I am a member, I should have said, of the Ontario Health Coalition since its inception. And it advocates for improvements in our publicly funded healthcare system, all four sectors. And right now we are campaigning for uh, four hours per day, because as you know, uh, the private sector does not give that. And it takes a lot of funding, as you do, to provide that four hours. And that is the minimum that's needed right now. And I appreciate that. Uh, I ha Since I became interested in this, I've tuned into your um, live stream sometimes and I became aware that you are um, proud of your homes and want to maintain that pride. And uh, I, come to before you to encourage you. I appreciate that and I am so encouraged by it and I just wanted to let you know that other people appreciate your efforts. Well, Shirley, thank you on behalf of council for your comments and uh, the visit today. Thank you for your time. Right. Um, next item is moving into uh, Committee of the Whole. Entertain the motion. <clears throat> yes. Yes, better a motion to receive the presentation. Moved by uh, Jones and catch Also, Call the vote, please. Deputy Warren Mental. Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Purcell? Yes. Councilor Martin? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor French? Yes. Councilor Jaguar? Yes. Councilor Ketchbaugh? Yes. Mr. Warden? Yes. 9 0, the motion is carried. Thank you. Um, moving into the committee of the whole, and I believe I had uh, French and uh, Purcell with their hands up. I'll go ahead with the vote. 
Deputy Warren Mennell. Yes. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Councillor Purcell. Yes. Councillor Martin. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor French. Yes. Councillor Jaguar. Yes. Councillor Ketchba. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. Nine zero. The motion is carried. Thank you. One two reports. I think the first one is um, mine. I don't know if there's any questions there. It, uh, times was very busy during the month, but uh, we'll comment on the the 4-H one on the on the Saturday a few weeks back it was actually a very because our being warden some days are, are you get to do some fun things and that was uh, a fun one for me and um, you, you know I won't say how many years ago when I was in 4-H but uh, when your original leader is still there Henry Helder and Henry Helder. first voice you, person you see on the the zoom meeting it was pretty amazing but uh um so that was that was a fun day but i don't know if there's any questions about the report i'd be happy to try and answer them but uh not seeing any I'd look for a, a motion to receive mental and mental and jones call a vote please deputy warden mental yes councillor mcphail yes council purcell yes council martin Yes. Councillor Jones? Yes. Councillor French? Yes. Councillor Shaguer? Yes. Councillor Ketchbaugh? Yes. Mr. Warden? Yes. Mr. <clears throat> the motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, move on is our next one is the uh, score appointments. Uh, any comments on that or reports there? So moved. Okay, moved by McPhail. Seconder, please. Jagger, please, and thank you. Uh, go ahead with the uh, vote, please. Deputy Warren Mel. I don't have any problem with the candidates. I do have a problem with store, so I'm going to say no. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Councillor Purcell. Yes. Councillor Martin. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor French. Yes. Councillor Jagger. Yes. Councillor Ketchbaugh. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. Eight one. The motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, next report is Director Holmes and Senior Services. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you, Mr. Warden, through you to members of council. So before you is our report on the Holmes Dietary Policy Manual Review and Revisions. And so the uh, Departmental Policy and Procedural Manuals are to be reviewed annually. The Holmes Policy Manual for the Dietary Department was reviewed and revised by the managers of support services for our three, from our three homes, as well as in consultation with a registered dietitian. And all of those changes are noted before you in the report and the revisions align with the Long-Term Care Home Act and, and regulations. So the two recommendations before you today are that the report be received and filed and that council approve the uh, manual review and revisions for 2020 for the dietary policy. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Questions for Michelle? Not seeing anyone, seeing any questions. Um, can we do that with one vote, both recommendations? Okay, mover and seconder, please. So, by Menno, second by Catch a Ball. Oh, Ed Beach, I'll keep you in mind for next one, Sally. Um, call the vote, please. Deputy Warren Mennell. Yes. Councilor McPhail. Yes. Councilor Purcell. Yes. Councilor Martin. <laughs> yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor French. Yes. Councilor Jaguar. Yes. Councilor Ketchbaugh. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. Nine zero. The motion is carried. Thank you. Um, Terrace Lodge redevelopment. Some excitement down there. Yes, uh, this is when I get really excited about coming to council. So Carolyn has a presentation she's pulling up. So thanks, Carolyn. Uh, so um, we decided we needed to do a, a develop a presentation that could be utilized for frontline staff, for our residents, for families, for council, for the general public to just keep them informed about where our project is at currently and what, how it's moving forward. So the first slide you see before you um, shows 
the coming in from the highway, so it's the front circle, the very light gray rooftops that you see are our current resident home areas. And then the dark gray um, rooftops that you see are the U-shaped additions. So construction begins February 2021. Yes, it did. The last week of February, we were breaking ground. Next slide, Carolyn. So just a review of our building design goals. So we really focused on creating that inviting, functional 100 bed home for our community and a home that's going to last for many, many uh, years to come. And to focus on enhancing the resident, staff, volunteer and community experience and not only meet, but exceed the ministry design standards. We looked at enhancing privacy and improving infection prevention and control and truly providing those welcoming spaces for socialization and activities. Upgrading service spaces for customer service, staff safety and efficiency. So focusing on some renovations to the chapel, the main kitchen, shipping and receiving, reception, and really that good goal of building on time and on budget. So that's our focus right now. And just a bit of looking back, the planning stages, MMMC, our architects worked extensively with our stakeholders. So we had public consultation meetings where everyone was invited in to give their input on what they valued and what they, what they envisioned for our, our redeveloped home. Our steering committee chaired by Councillor Bob Purcell provides the oversight for our project. And within that, we have a working committee that informed the project design and project decisions. And so important, we were able to incorporate the COVID-19 learnings into the design and a uh, fundraising campaign was launched in December in the middle of a snowstorm, but we, we got it going. And uh, so February 21, as I said, construction began on phase one. Next slide. So the summary, we're staying with our 100 beds and we're staying with our four resident home areas, including our one memory care home area. But that new addition is really focusing on significant uh, expansion, a new home area space for the residents and then renovations with full renovations to all the existing home areas, the main kitchen, shipping and receiving, and then partial renovations to the basement and main floor core areas. So again, we have three construction phases and we'll speak a little bit about those. If we look at the resident home areas, so this is the first floor, north and south. On the top of the screen is your north wing, and so that's it's the whole top and then the L shape leading down to the south. The south is that full bottom of that screen. So again, 20 bedrooms in each resident home area and something we haven't had to date, but we're having dining rooms on each resident home area, but not one, but two dining home, uh, dining rooms in every resident home area and having an attached surgery and a home kitchen and the activity lounge and program spaces are just uh, so inviting and something that we're not used to in the resident home areas. And not only are we having a tub room, but also a shower room where we're accustomed right now to having a, a tub and shower room all together in the same space and staff and service spaces within the resident home, spa home spaces, which is new as well. So let's have a look at the resident rooms. So our current state to just remind council, we have 80 residents currently sharing one room, uh, two residents to one room and four residents to one bathroom. So big change coming up down the road for this project. 84 residents will have their own single bedroom, which is the photo on the left with a private ensuite washroom. And only 16 residents will have a single bedroom with a shared ensuite washroom. But each of those two rooms, which is unique to Terrace Lodge because at Bobier Villa, the double rooms is one entrance. These residents will have their own separate entrance and only a shared washroom. So an extra enhancement to the Terrace Lodge project. Next slide. Um, so this is a good look at the dining spaces. So again, two inviting dining rooms with the servery and the home kitchen attached. And then, so we're dining right in those resident home areas uh, that significantly reducing the wait times for portering, uh, providing a pleasant dining experience and easy access to all dining tables. No more moving people in and out, for interrupting their meals and moving them away from the tables. So uh, late, late arrivers or early uh, folks leaving the table early. Um, don't have to be interrupted. Uh, and the ability for future for physical distancing during outbreaks. So if we have an enteric outbreak after we're done pandemic, if we have an enteric outbreak or if we have an influenza outbreak, we'll still be able to bring people to the dining room because of what we've done here. So we're pretty excited about that piece. And the next slide. 
So this is one of my favorite pictures here. Look at those spacious and secure uh, courtyard spaces, that large accessible area, views of the courtyard from all of the resident bedrooms, walking paths, gardens, sitting areas, and raised planters, areas for activities, events, and gatherings. That's just so inviting when I look at that space. So an overview of the core areas um, on the right hand side, uh, is the first floor core areas. So full renovation of the main kitchen, that's that brown space on the top right hand photo. And a new addition to kitchen and receiving areas, the gray space beside it and right in front of that gray space is a new second elevator. And I can't tell you how many times I've been asked, when you do the project, is there gonna be a second elevator? Because uh, we, we really need to have that to, to rely upon. So we're so excited. And actually, Christine, one of her first questions was, please tell me the project is gonna have two elevators. So she was really happy to learn that as well. Um, we're re relocating the chapel event space and tuck shop. So if you look on the, the left-hand picture on the bottom right there, that's our current chapel space. And we can only, pre even pre-pandemic, we could probably get 12, maybe 15 residents in the big chairs in that space. And so we're shifting that um, chapel space to our current dining room space. And you'll see that in the next picture a little more clearly, but it's about four and five times the size. So it's really gonna serve the residents well. Um, new family suite, which is something we're really excited to be able to offer. A new health clinic. So uh, when we have dentistry or optometry come in, we'll actually have an area where we can bring residents to so we're not uh, uh, uprooting other areas or spaces. An updated reception area and enhanced staff and service space. So here's a highlight. This is our current dining space. And so in our project, we're going to re uh, reuse that space. So about half of our current dining space is gonna become our new chapel on the left-hand side. And there's gonna be a movable partition which allows the space to be divided for different uses. So if we wanna close it off for chapel or if we wanna open up for larger gatherings and look how conveniently that tech shop is co-located adjacent to the event space to serve those large events. This is our main kitchen. And so to, it's going to be fully renovated with an addition for receiving. And so we're so excited to say renovation is actually gonna occur in phases. So the kitchen's gonna remain fully functional throughout the project. We're not gonna to have to bring in a trailer and start cooking outside in the parking lot. We're gonna be able to maintain, fully maintain services throughout our project. And uh, this, this will be our central preparation of meals. And having a look at the basement renovations, we've got some offices there that are gonna be relocated from the basement to the first floor. This uh, space will then be converted into staff, a staff shower and an, an enlarged change room. So every staff member will have a locker. And focusing on infection prevention and control, if the pandemic taught us anything, it was really that we needed to look, go back to our project, make sure we covered everything and implemented what we needed to, to move forward in a safe manner. So informed by COVID-19 learnings, we talked to public health, we talked to other homes, uh, we talked to the ministry and we incorporated some best practices. We already had those single rooms with private or shared ensuite washrooms, but we incorporated larger dining rooms, allowing for that uh, comfortable space tables. Infection prevention and control supply cupboards are now tastefully incorporated outside each bedroom. So they're built into the wall. You'll see that when we do the, the 3D tour in a few minutes here. Um, high quality air exchange system and dedicated oxygen storage space. Negative pressure cap cap capability at a flip of a switch and additional staff change room space and individual lockers. So phase one, that's where we are today. Everything you see in yellow is what's gonna happen in phase one. That's the addition on the right hand side, as well as the construction of the new receiving addition. And this really, we're looking at minimal impact to the existing home for the first 12 months. What's happening right now is where you see the yellow, across from there is all glassed areas on the first floor and the second floor. And the residents are, that's their viewing area. They're already claimed a spot. This is a program, they're watching, they're excited. They're talking amongst themselves and you can just feel the energy. So that's pretty exciting. And the next slide, phase two, again, we're, we're moving, renovating the north side. So that's the yellow on the top of your screen and those residents will move into that new addition on the far right. And um, so that work will be done in a bit of uh, renovations in some of the core areas on the left-hand side as well. And then phase three, 
uh, renovation of the first and second floor on the south side, again, uh, renovating some of the core areas, finishing that up and moving residents out of the south side so that we can do the work on in that area. The schedule, I won't go through it in full, but at, when we get to completion, we're looking at November of 2023. So we're getting there one step at a time. It's exciting days for sure. And so when we're looking at construction, we already have a, uh, a, pro a team that we've developed. It's the same team when we're looking at design planning. So we have disciplines from all three, all of our, um, all of our departments. We have staff from all of the departments that are part of this team. We're looking at what's happening, what's coming up, how's that going to impact your departments, your workload, your work um, flow, and how's that impacting staff or residents and visitors. And so we're having those conversations. And of course, safety is the top priority. Um, so we're having monthly meetings and those could be more frequent or less frequent depending on what's happening uh, within the project. And then recognizing, especially as we move to phase two and three, recognizing and supporting the emotions of change is going to be exciting, but it's also going to be stressful, right? So we need to make sure we're having those conversations so that we can educate, get the feedback and implement the appropriate uh, new protocols, policies or procedures. Phase one, which we're in, is going to be the least amount of impact. So it's a nice way to gradually break us in. And phase two and three is we're moving residents around and staff are getting and residents are getting used to new layouts and um, that will be a change, but we'll enjoy more privacy and less sharing of washrooms during those phases. Again, I can't overstate the importance and value of communication. It's critical for everyone, keeping everyone informed. So you will see me coming back to council to give you updates. And, and uh, we are, we've already had staff meetings doing this presentation and we've done it for the residents and the smiles on their faces were huge. And uh, we're going to be posting that online for families as well. And so just listing some of the communication vehicles that are available for us to support that. And very important aspect of this project is our fundraising campaign, uh, or appropriately titled Comforts of Home. So um, got some suggestions there that uh, we're looking at beautifying the courtyards, providing comforts of the home fireplaces, enhancing resident enjoyment and activities and supporting families. So a lot of great opportunities for those that are interested in supporting the project. And I think the next slide has the uh, link to anyone who's curious who wants to go on there and have a look and see how they can support the project. And that's just back to the first slide. So uh, now Carolyn's going to pull up the, the video for us and it goes very quickly. So I'll try to, to capture as much as I can about, as we go through it. So this was developed by MNFC to give us a, so here we are, we're coming in the front door. So she hasn't hit play yet. So that's good. So we're coming in those front double doors. On the right, you see the library area and the front lobby. And on the left-hand side, you're going to see that reception area. And we're going to go down the hall where that window is. That's the beauty salon. And we're going to come down the hall and we're going to turn right. We're going down to the south wing. And so there was an activity area. You're coming up to the two dining rooms. They couldn't find any women to put in here. So it's all men. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> it's, uh, it's all men that are here at Ferris Lodge today. And uh, so we've got some charting areas. We've got resident rooms. You can notice those cupboards on the outside of the bedrooms. That's where we're storing all of our personal protective equipment, keeping it well supplied and readily available for necessary use. And so we're coming down the hall. We've got a nice lounge space and a charting area where staff are readily available should residents require any support. And it's moving down a little bit further. We've got medication and treatment rooms on the left and we're gonna go into a resident room. So this is a single room. And so a lot of space and you can see the ensuite washroom, a lot of storage built into the walls there coming back out into the hall. And as we go down, we've got tub and shower rooms, we've got storage rooms, we've got uh, some staff space, and we're coming down to a nice large program room at the end of the hall. And there's a staff office just off of this area, so the recreation department staff are going to be right on site on each of the resident home areas, readily available to uh, support programming. 
coming back out into the hall and we're going to go outside, I believe. We're going into the center courtyard. I just love this piece here. Look at the size of this courtyard and the opportunities for gazebos, raised planters, all the things that we're, we're looking to fundraise for. Uh, a lot of usable space uh, for those that are in equipment and it's a big change for us to have that usable space, accessible area. Absolutely beautiful. So we're going to come back in and this is going to, this is our current dining room space and you can see how it's being changed. So it will now, it will become the event space. And on the right hand side, I think there was a quick little view there of the tuck shop. And this is that movable partition to separate off the chapel from the event space, or we can close it off uh, to be utilized for the chapel. There you have it. We are so excited and I'm so um, pleased I had the opportunity today to come and speak to you about this and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Michelle, your enthusiasm and pride is very, very evident and indeed it is uh, exciting. Councillor French and Councillor Menno and myself, along with our capable chairman, Bob Purcell, share that excitement and uh, probably appropriate if uh, Ask our chairman for some comments. Bob, would you like to like to see the smile on your face? It's pretty exciting times. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, you know, we're all really excited, especially since it's real now. We actually have shovels into the ground and uh, real work happening. And uh, I know from experience down here when we did uh, Bovier Villa and uh, a couple of the Lions Apartments buildings. Uh, how this becomes the uh, entertainment center for all our current residents as they get to watch the construction and actually feel like they're part of it. Um, I wanna commend uh, Michelle and the whole team for putting together the presentation and they will be updating you regularly as, as we go along. Um, financially, I think we have beat the bushes pretty well. And uh, the only reason the steering committee stays in place is in case something starts to go a little bit sideways, but I don't anticipate we'll be doing anything except cheerleading from now on. So thank you, folks. And I should, you know, like I did mention the the, the steering committee, but uh, the one thing that we've done is uh, um, a great team from the architects, the staff people, um, it's just been a, a good team effort. So we put the right people in there to do the thing. So it's uh, uh, Councillor Jaguer, if you'd like to come, because certainly the, the fundraising component of this is that little extra. So please have some comments. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, I appreciate the presentation and the update. And you saw in the video that uh, it looks like a beautiful state of the art facility. <laughs> and we all know that the vision is that we want to take that up to a home and we want, um, you know, paint colors that are not like that, like a facility. We need personalized doors. Uh, we need planters and bird feeders and uh, we need recreational uh, equipment. And uh, that will really take it to that vision where it will be a home, not just a facility. And that's what our residents deserve. So, um, but that doesn't come cheap. It will need the support, all of your support, the support of our community. Um, the, the bill for all of those items is $650,000. And uh, we know that as a community, we can pull this off. So just one step at a time, donate to terracelodge.ca. Super easy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, any members of council would like to comment? Because this is pretty exciting stuff. Councillor Mental. Just a comment and, and thanks Michelle for the presentation and uh, I'm sure there's a lot of excited people when they saw the back of finally coming onto the ground after waiting for four or five years. Uh, you mentioned uh, the, the private uh, um, rooms are 84 and remind me what it was previous or still is under the existing home. So right now we have 20 single rooms. So a significant increase for 20 to 84. That's good news. Thank you. Yeah. And Councillor French, I think I saw you. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, I just wanted to make a comment about the fact that it's going to be so much more comfortable for the residents, but not just the comfort of our residents. It's going to be so efficient for our staff. 
Um, it's it's going to be an amazing change for the staff because the way it's laid out, it's going to loosen up some of their time so that they can be doing other things as well. Uh, so I think that the layout and the way that um, it's going to be set up is just going to be amazing for everyone. Thank you. Couldn't agree more. Certainly a, a confidence builder for staff. You think back to last year, what our, our long term care have endured. So something, something positive to look forward to. Um, Chairman Bob, would you like to move this report? Yes, sir, I would. All right, do we have a seconder? I'll second. Uh, Mary French was a little ahead, so uh, moved by Purcell and French. Please call the vote. Deputy Warren mm -hmm. Yes. Councillor McPhail? Yes. Councillor Purcell? Yes. Councillor Martin? Yes. Councillor Jones? Yes. Councillor French? Yes. Councillor Jaguar? Yes. Councillor Ketchbaugh? Yes. Mr. Warden? Yes. 9 0, the motion is carried. Thanks, Michelle. Our next uh, Director of Human Resources, Non Union Economic Adjustment Recommendation. Good morning. Welcome, Amy. Good morning, Warden and members of Council. So, as is the process annually, HR staff have gathered extensive comparator and market data in order to reach a recommended non-union cost of living increase. For planning purposes, 2% was included in the 2021 budget. Therefore, the current recommendation will not negatively impact the approved budget. If approved, the requisite bylaw will be prepared for the next council meeting. And the recommendation before Council is for a 1.75% non-union economic increase. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions for Amy. Councillor Mental. Just I want to congratulate uh, Amy and her staff for our uh, very successful negotiation. I mean, we, we set a ceiling and she came in, uh, shall we say, under budget. So that's uh, congratulations. Further comments? Councillor Ketchup. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Warden. Just curious uh, through you to Amy. Uh, you mentioned uh, taking a good look at the uh, comparator data. Uh, can you give us an example or perhaps who uh, you were comparing to? Definitely. So every year we look at our local municipalities and what their increases are. And then we also have a a standard group that we gather from surrounding municipalities, including St. Thomas, Oxford County, Middlesex County, um, Norfolk County, Wellington, um, really all the surrounding counties, as well as many local municipalities in our region. Okay, just to clarify, if I may, uh, you're, you're like size municipalities, you're not looking at the, the local municipal partners. Well, both we do gather all of that data and we also are comparing to our settlements with our internal unions to make sure we're not creating any comp compression issues or anything like that okay. so we gather all of the data and consider all of that when coming to a recommendation okay and i'm, I'm fishing here i'm i apologize but uh with respect to our comparators, how do uh, staff salary rate uh, with our comparators? Are we at the median mark? Are we above? Are we below? Are we catching up? Well, that would require a market um, salary review, which we are okay. due for and we should plan for next year. Um, that's where a consultant would gather all of our um, true comparators to determine where our salaries are at. The current process is an annual look at um, just the cost of living increase. So at this time, we don't gather um, actual salary data, just their non-union economic increases, the percentage that others are going up by. And that typically keeps us in line with the market as long as we don't um, come in a lot lower than that on an annual basis. Okay. Just as an explanation, uh, at BAM, and it's built in our personnel policy that uh, we use the adjustment uh, for CPI for Ontario based on from Ontario, uh, October. And this past uh, year, it was a 0.7%. Uh, 
That's why I'm looking for the difference. Just for an explanation. Thank you. Further comments, questions? Um, if there is no further discussion, I'll look for a uh, mover and seconder. Moved by Jones. Second Martin. by Menel. Martin, second by Martin. Um, please call the vote. Deputy Warren Menel. Yes. Councilor McPhail. Yes. Councilor Purcell. Yes. Councilor Martin. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor French. Yes. Councilor Jaguer. Yes. Councilor Ketchbaugh. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. Nine zero. The motion is carried. Thank you, Amy. Um, Jim, you're up. Annual repayment limit, please. Thank you, Mr. Warden. The annual repayment limit is a uh, obligation that is uh, we needs to be published each year, uh, required from the province. And for the county of Elgin, the amount that the county could afford um, per their rules, which is how much is paid as repayment as well as interest, is a total of $12 million. Uh, currently, there is already a uh, debt um, from, from public health, which for that, um, there are charges that are consolidated into our um, annual statements of 118,000. That leaves the county with uh, 1.8 million in its own for its own uses. Um, just to remind the council, um, in February you approved the new 10-year plan uh, that had 44 million dollars of borrowing between 2020 and 2025. Um, as an example um, that was provided by the province uh, with our annual repayment limit, if we were to borrow a total of 91 million at a rate of 5%, uh, that would be containable within the 11.8 million of available AR, ARL. And if uh, interest rates go up, then obviously the amount that would be, uh, that we could carry within that ARL would come down. Um, now, those interest rates are, are higher than we're seeing right now. In fact, the $6 million that we borrowed in November, uh, we achieved a rate of 1.43%. Our second installment on the $6 million we're planning for May of uh, this year. And uh, although rates are a little bit higher at the moment, we're, they're still below 2%. Um, so even if rates were to climb up to double digits um, for the future debt that we're going to borrow, we would still be well within our ARL limits. Um, and uh, the report is uh, before you uh, to be received and filed. Thank you, Jim. Any questions for Jim? Fairly straightforward. Look for a mover and seconder, please. Menel, catch a ball. Um, Go ahead and call the vote, please. Deputy Warren Menel. Yes. Councilor McPhail. Yes. Councilor Purcell. Yes. Councilor Martin. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor French. Yes. Councilor Jaguer. Yes. Councilor Ketchbaugh. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. Nine zero. The motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, Director of Engineering Services, Brian Geeks Bridge replacement. Good, Good morning, Mr. Warden. Good morning, Mr. Warren, through to County Council. Uh, before you is a uh, staff report on uh, as it stands to the Meeks Bridge uh, replacement tender results and recommendation are before you. Happy to report uh, uh, from a financial standpoint, uh, the budget, uh, the project is well under budget. Uh, the project, as previously reported to Council, involves relocation of the former Port Bruce temporary bridge and repurposing that structure as well as modifying it to accommodate a two lane bridge structure. In addition, uh, this project also involves uh, removal of the Port Bruce temporary boat launch and uh, existing uh, temporary bridge approaches and abutments. With that, be happy to answer any questions. Certainly good news, Brian. Uh, Councillor Jones, comment please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Orden. Uh, Ryan, is there a start date for uh, the removal of the Meeks Bridge? Uh, yeah, right. Do you have a timeline for that? Through Mr. Warren uh, to Councillor Jones, at this point in time, we don't have a formal schedule, but I, we're expecting some time and uh, a date 
uh, in April for works to begin. Sounds great. I'd be happy to move the recommendation. All right, uh, Councilor Mendel. And just to follow up on, on Grant's uh, question, when do we expect to be taking the, the uh, bridge down in Port Bruce, uh, Brad? Uh, through Mr. Warden, uh, it's expected the temporary uh, structure is likely to be removed uh, sometime later summer. Uh, again, in the absence of a formal schedule, uh, once received, we'd be happy to forward those details on to Council. Okay, thank you. I'll second that motion. Okay. Other discussion? Certainly good news monetary wise. Um, go ahead and call the vote, please. Deputy Warren Mendel. Yes. Councilor McPhail. Yes. Councilor Purcell. Yes. Councilor Martin. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor French. Yes. Councilor Shiger. Yes. Councilor Ketchbaugh. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. Nine zero. The motion is carried. Thank you. Um, County solicitor encroachment agreement. Uh, good morning. Uh, there you have the morning, report, Steve. Uh, a report. Uh, with respect to or seeking approval and authorization to execute an encroachment agreement for uh, exterior stairs, a portion of which uh, encroach onto Sp the Sparta Line Road Allowance and the uh, and the Central Elgin Sidewalk associated with the redeveloped and improved uh, Sparta Line. The report is uh, self-explanatory, uh, but I would simply indicate that the encroachment was discovered during the course of the Aspire Line Improvement uh, Project last year, uh, the design accommodated the stairs, but nevertheless, the stairs did represent, or at least a portion of them, did represent an unauthorized uh, encroachment. Uh, the rather than require the removal of the stairs, what was proposed was a three-party encroachment agreement involving Elgin, Central Elgin, and the owners. Uh, the terms were negotiated, particularly with respect to insurance and indemnity. Uh, the owners have agreed to the terms and signed the agreement. Uh, Central Elgin staff uh, agreed to the provisions and their council will be asked for a similar uh, bylaw for approval at its next uh, meeting. Uh, so the recommendations are before you, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions for Steve? Mr. Warden, Sally? Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to comment that I'm really happy that this has finally been concluded. I know it's been ongoing, and, and uh, just so you know, those stairs have been there since 1846, so it's not like they're new and of course the road was widened years ago and they weren't on the road allowance originally, but uh, I'm really happy that we've come to a, an agreement. Thank you. If I, if I could, uh, uh, Warden, uh, the, the difficulty from a legal perspective is that the encroachment uh, now exists and possessory rights um, are not allowed against a road allowance. Okay. Did we get a mover and seconder for that? Okay. Um, mover and seconder, please. Purcell. Sally. And, and Martin. Uh, please call the vote. Deputy Warren Mennell. Yes. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Councillor Purcell. Yes. Councillor Martin. <clears throat> yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor French. Yes. Councilor Shiger? Yes. Councilor Ketchbaugh? Yes. Mr. Warden? Yes. 9 0. The motion is carried. Thank you. Um, connectivity Committee requests to engage technical technical consultant. Julie? Uh, thanks, Mr. Warden. Through you to members of Council. At the Connectivity Committee meeting held on February 25th, the committee identified a number of steps uh, in their process of developing a made in Elgin solution to, to help solve Elgin's connectivity challenges. Uh, this includes uh, the need for a technical assessment and needs assessment of served, underserved, and unserved areas across the county. Uh, it also involves an unbiased objective technical assessment of which technology solutions are most cost effective and would work best in unserved and underserved areas in the county. 
and an investigation of possible funding models. The committee determined that as a possible next step, um, a committee could or a consultant could be hired to can complete these priority items on their behalf. So an RFP has been issued and is um, has been prepared and sent to the connectivity committee for review. Um, that review is, of course, subject to county council's willingness to proceed in this fashion. You'll note that this report also includes um, a process for handling letters of support, and it is recommended that in order to expedite uh, the letters of support for local ISPs, um, that the warden be delegated that. Um, that authority by county council. So there are three recommendations before you, and there are members of the connectivity committee here who I'm sure would be happy to uh, join me in answering any of your questions. Thank you, Julie. To open the floor for any questions, and uh, Councillor McPhail and Councillor Jaguer and myself, and previously Councillor uh, Menno was on this committee, been. Uh, We've been working hard every other week, uh, six months now. So we've we've actually amassed a lot of information, put it all there in front of us, and we've come to that conclusion. It's, it's time to make the next step. So it's it's exciting, um, you know, if the ones at home and your frame freezes and. You, it, it's internet is so important and we've said that so many times in the last year, but uh, that that need is, is greater now than even a year ago. So, uh, but uh, open the floor here for some discussion. Recommendations are there from Julie, three recommendations. Comments? Councilor McPhail. Yes, thank you, Mr. Orden. Through you to County Council, uh, uh, having uh, come to this uh, connectivity committee, uh, it has matured to the point now that, I, I, to be honest with you, I think that the demands that this committee is now uh, putting on Julie to uh, come back with information and reports, and 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 she's she's uh, uh, being a self-taught IT uh, <laughs> uh, or self-taught broadband uh, uh, consultant, I guess at this point. But I, I think that this committee is at the point now where. Uh, we can no longer put those demands on Julie, and we we have to have uh, we have to have support from someone that uh, has a, a very good understanding of broadband and uh, what needs to be done in Algon, and, uh, and to be able to tie that uh, in in a format that we can bring forward to, to County Council for uh, your consideration. And I, I think it's imperative that. Uh, that we have this professional help on the committee and uh, certainly uh, the recommendations uh, that are in this report are pretty straightforward uh, but uh, I, I think just to, uh, to keep the committee going there seems to be some enthusiasm around the table that this is probably the next logical step and, and certainly I thank Julie for getting to this getting us to this point uh, so uh, Thank you for those comments. Councillor Jones, go ahead. Jordan, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, we, we need to get on this. Uh, I think we need that technical help uh, definitely uh, to move the project further out into uh, the extremities of this county. Uh, just a question, uh, is there any kind of an upset limit on what you expect the consultant will cost, Julie? Um. No, without a defined RFP, which uh, we hope to have the committee review and review the scope for that um, consultant, uh, it's it's hard to estimate as well. Um, municipalities around us who we would traditionally reach out to to find out, you know, do you have an RFP template for this or what were the costs associated with a study like this? Um, those examples don't exist. And so it's hard to 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 even set an upset limit at this time. Um, but what we would propose is that we will um, have the committee review the RFP in detail, um, post the RFP as soon as possible, and then bring the results back to County Council and propose um, strategies for funding it. I think um, 
right now, my gut tells me it would be a good use of modernization funding and or COVID funding. So I think um, to answer your question very simply, uh, we don't have an upset limit at this time. Councilor Jones, go ahead. I'll move. Thank you for that. And uh, uh, Councilor Jaguar, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Warden. And, and just to add to what Councilor McPhail said, um, so I just want to clarify that this will not duplicate or redo anything that the Connectivity Committee has done and the staff has done. This is really, I see it as our own last mile <laughs> of, uh, of the work that we need to do. We just hit the, the limits of our own uh, knowledge and we also need a third party objective view. Um, so this is sort of to really finish. Uh, the work and um, so yeah so I, I think it is a good recommendation um, if we come back with the number I, I can comment on uh, in Malahide we're conducting a, a feasibility study around uh, towers and with a third party to get an objective view and I think the the RFP came at about close to 50,000 so I wouldn't be surprised if we were lo looking at that ballpark could be more um, but we'll we'll come back you willing to second this motion? I, I'd just like to acknowledge um, the members of, uh, of the committee. We have some volunteers and, and most helpful. And uh, I did mention that we meet every two weeks. So we have to acknowledge staff because they've done a tremendous amount of work, um, not just once, but every two weeks. So we appreciate and acknowledge that. So no further discussion. Oh, Council Purcell. Mr. Warden, I. Councilor Purcell and then, then Councilor Martin. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, yes, Mr. Warden. Um, I, I think the committee is on the same page as most of the council members. Uh, we're much more interested in implementation and execution than somebody studying and telling us what the problem is because that's been beaten to death and cost a lot of money in the past. So I, I, I think it's really important as we go out and get this resource uh, that they do things like take it completely off Julie's desk and use it as a standalone implementation tool. I, I fully agree that we have to simplify things like giving the signing authority for endorsing any projects that are trying to go forward and seek federal and provincial funding at the warden level. So as long as the emphasis is on implementation and execution, um, my concern is if we don't do it that way, uh, we will not need them or we will not need SWIFT because I know in our municipality, rightly or wrongly, we're probably going to be done before we see implementation at those other levels. Uh, we're putting up two more towers and it's not costing our municipality anything. It's just working closely with the um, service providers who need support to get the access to the federal provincial funding. And then they will go ahead and implement and execute just like any free enterprise system will do. So I, I think it's really important that they emphasize that area. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Council Martin, go ahead. Yes, just so you're aware, I have to keep turning my video off because it keeps freezing on me. You all freeze and I certainly support this because I think it is important. And uh, even though I live in a village that has Rogers Cable, I live too far back from the road. So there are lots of examples of people that are missing out even though there is some service in the area so i certainly support this uh, absolutely until you even had those blackouts whatever you want to call them that you realize the importance uh someone told me recently councillor martin there's a new tower gone up on kate of inn that may be of some help to you yeah, it's not, I can't see it from here. So they said that it wouldn't work because there's no direct line of sight to it. It's not a very tall tower. Okay. It's gonna help some anyway, but we're, we have a mo mover and seconder. If no further discussion, we'll call the vote. Deputy Warren Mennell. Yes. Councilor McPhail. Yes. Councilor Purcell. Yes. Councilor Martin. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor French. Yes. Councillor Shiger. Yes. Councillor Ketchbaugh. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. 9 0. The motion is carried. Thank you. We look forward to the next step. Um, Elgin County Council Strategic Plan, Staff Action Plan Update. 
quarterly update. So please go ahead, Julie. Thanks, Mr. Warren. Through you to members of council, the purpose of this report is to provide council with an updated action plan originally developed by staff in February and March of 2020, most recently updated and presented to council on November the 10th. The action contain, actions contained within this plan support Elgin County Council's strategic plan 2020 to 2022. Uh, there is a recommendation before you and I'd be pleased to answer any questions. Questions for Julie. Fairly straightforward and we are moving along. So a mover and seconder, please. Uh, catch ball and mental. Deputy Warren Mental. Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Purcell? Yes. Councilor Martin? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor French? Yes. Councilor Shagir? Yes. Councilor Ketchbaugh? Yes. Mr. Warden? Yes. 9 0. The motion is carried. Thank you. <clears throat> um, COVID 19 emergency team planning. Please. Thanks, Mr. Warden. Through you to members of council, the purpose of this report is to provide council with an update on the county's COVID 19 response. Uh, the recommendation is to receive and file this report. I would be happy to answer any questions you might have. Questions, comments for Julie? Everyone's happy with the report, by the looks of it. Mover and seconder, please. McPhail, Jaguar, call the vote, please. Deputy Warren Mennell. Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Purcell? Yes. Councilor Martin? Yes. Councillor Jones? Yes. Councillor French? Yes. Councillor Shagir? Yes. Councillor Ketchba? Yes. Mr. Wharton? Yes. 9 0. The motion is carried. Thank you. Um, we're on to correspondence. Right place. Items for consideration. We have a letter from Margaret McCullough regarding the lack of protection for companion animals in Canada. Any comments on that? Deputy, Deputy Ward, Mano, go ahead. I, I would move support for this. You know, I, I have no, no uh, sympathy whatsoever for the puppy mills, and I, I'm, a, I'm afraid I'm probably a dog lover, but uh, um, I, I, uh, I think this deserves support. Thank you. Uh, do we have a seconder for that? Can I just clarify oh. um, specifically in what way are we supporting? The letter, I think we want to send this off to, uh, this, I'm sure the feds, this is probably a federal policy, isn't it? There is an e-petition. Um, so they're asking that we sign and share it. And um, the, the request is also that council consider enacting animal welfare legislation, similar to that adopted by Beaconsfield Council in Quebec. Okay, okay. sounds good. Are we acting animal legislation? I, it, is everyone very clear? Is this going to kind of take us down further than we want? I think it's a rabbit hole. That's, I'm kind of a little leery myself. Mr. Warden, just as a comment, I received this the other day uh, as the mayor. Uh, and uh, if it's the same one that I would think it is, uh, this originated out of Victoria, BC. So they've just thrown this oh, ball and see what sticks. Yeah, I have not responded to it. Uh, again, I think it's, uh, though the cause may be worthy, it, it's, I think, beyond the jurisdiction at the municipal level. So would this be better receive and file? I would support that. We have a motion on the floor. I don't see a seconder yet. Councillor French, I think, has Councillor French has a comment. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary, go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Warden. Actually, I got this um, email as well, and uh, my CAO gave me some information. If you would like me to share that with Council, maybe it would give us a little more insight. Certainly. Um, he just said to me that, as an aside, this is somewhat interesting, as Ontario has stepped away from an SPCA model two years ago, um, they were required to by a court ruling. That isn't to say that improvement still can't be made, but Ontario now likely has a more comprehensive response 
to animal welfare than other provinces. Municipalities can license kennels to prevent puppy mills, but really the way the system works now, the investigation and prosecution of welfare criminal aspect would fall to the province. This is primarily because their investigators have greater authority and tools now that municipally appointed bylaw officers. So that's just what he shared with me because I was curious about this as well. All right, thank you, appreciate that. Further discussion? Councillor Martin wish to speak. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I'm aware of the puppy mill thing. I ran into it looking for a dog. Um, I was warned against, and there are several in Elgin County, just so you're aware that those do exist um, and animals are kept in terrible conditions. I think we might endorse at least that the province should be more proactive in uh, dealing with this and getting the licensing in place that Mary mentioned so that they can't have one without a uh, license and be inspected. I'm starting to get a little confused here. Mr. Warden. Yes. Uh, in the absence of a seconder for the original motion, I'm happy to second Ketchabo's secondary motion that is to receive and file. I will accept that. Further discussion? Are we ready for the vote? Please call the vote. Deputy Warden Menno. Yes. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Councillor Purcell. Yes. Councillor Martin. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor French. Yes. Councillor Shiger. Yes. Councillor Ketchbaugh. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. Nine zero. The motion is carried. Thank you. Items for information. They are attached. Uh, Do we need to go through each one separately or just collectively? Unless uh, anyone wishes to make a comment. Otherwise, you can um, receive correspondence items one through five with the same motion. What is your will and pleasure? Is there anyone, any there you'd like to bring out? Make a motion to receive and file one through five. By Happy Warden Menel, second by McPhail. Um, Please call the vote. Deputy Warden Metal. Yes. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Councillor Purcell. Yes. Councillor Martin. Kind of Councillor Martin. Yes. Thank you. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor French. Yes. Councillor Jaguer. Yes. Councillor Ketchbaugh. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. Nine zero. The motion is carried. Thank you. Other business, we have statements, inquiries by members. Noting none. Notice of motion. Noting none. Matters of urgency, I hope not, but. Noting none. Um, we're at close, ready to go into close, um, close meeting, close session. Before we do it, should we have a short recess? If we could just do the motion now, then we're yeah. in yes. close. Yeah. Obtain a motion to move into closed session, please. Jones and French, mm -hmm. uh, call the vote, please. Deputy Warden Mental. Yes. Councilor McPhail. Yes. Councilor Purcell. Yes. Councilor Martin. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor French. Yes. Councilor Jaguar. Yes. Councilor Ketchbaugh. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. Nine zero. The motion is carried. All right. Um, before we go into, we're, we'll take a short recess. <clears throat> we are back live. I'm entertaining a motion to move into closed open session. Move the rise and catch report. Catch ball. Rise and report. Catch ball and Menno. Please call the vote. Deputy Warren Menno. Yes. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Councillor Purcell? Yes. Councillor Martin? Yes. Councillor Jones? Yes. Councillor French? Yes. Councillor Shiger? Yes. Councillor Ketchball? Yes. Mr. Warden? Yes. 9-0, the motion is carried. If I'm on the right spot, we're 
first uh, report on invest investigation update. Uh, be it resolved that the report from the tree commissioner be received. Over and seconder, please. Ketchabaugh and Jones. <clears throat> uh, call the vote, please. Deputy Warren Menel. Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Purcell? Yes. Councilor Martin? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor French? Yes. Councilor Jaguar? Yes. Councilor Ketchabaugh? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. 9 0. The motion is carried. Thank you. Um, impacts of administration building elevator and basement accessibility washroom project. Um, mover and seconder for that. Menno and French. Any further discussion? Call the vote, please. Uh, Deputy Warren Menno. Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. I just need to back up. Okay. I think we we should explicitly say that uh, be it resolved that the report from the director of engineering services be received. Moved by Menel, seconded by French, and then Deputy Warren Menel. Yes. Councilor McPhail. Yes. Councilor Purcell. Yes. Councilor Martin. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor French. Yes. Councilor Jaguar. Yes. Councilor Ketchbaugh. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. Nine zero. The motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, on to tenant acknowledgement and agreement. Elgin County Administration Building Elevator Improvement Project. Be it resolved that staff proceed as directed. Mover and seconder. Jaguar. Jones. Deputy Warden Menno. Yes. Councilor McPhail. Yes. Councilor Purcell. Yes. Councilor Martin. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor French. Yes. Councilor Jaguar. Yes. Councilor Ketchba? Yes. Mr. Warden? Yes. 9 0. The motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, property matter. Be it resolved that the report from the county solicitor be received and that staff proceed as directed. Moved by Menno, second by Ketchabaugh. Thank you. Call the vote, please. Yes. Warden Menno? Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Purcell? Yes. Councilor Martin? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor French? Yes. Councilor Jaguar? Yes. Councilor Ketchba? Yes. Ms. Warden? Yes. 9 0. The motion is carried. Thank you. Item 5 Service Delivery Review Road Maintenance Agreement Study. Be it resolved that staff proceed as directed. Moved by McPhail. Second by Martin. Martin. Oh, Martin. Thank you. Call the vote, please. Deputy Warren Menno? Yes. Councilor Purcell? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Martin? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor French? Yes. Councilor Jaguar? Yes. Councilor Ketchba? Yes. Mr. Warden? Yes. 9 0. The motion is carried. Thank you. Employment lands update, please. Be it resolved that the report from the Chief Administrative Officer be received. Moved by Jones, Menel. Uh, call the vote, please. Be warned, Menel. Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Purcell? Yes. Councilor Martin? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor French? Yes. Councilor Jaguar? Yes. Councilor Ketchba? Yes. Mr. Warden? Yes. 9 0. The motion is carried. Thank you. Southwestern and Integrated Fiber Technology Loan Agreement, please. Be it resolved that staff proceed as directed. Moved by. Purcell, second by McPhail. Please call the vote. Deputy Warren Menel. Yes. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Councillor Purcell. Yes. Councillor Martin. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor French. Yes. Councillor Jaguar. Yes. Councillor Ketchba. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. Nine zero. The motion is carried. Thank you. Finally, the organizational review. Be it resolved that the report from the Chief Administrative Officer be received and that staff proceed as directed. By Ketchabaugh Menno. Call the vote, please. Deputy Warren Menno. Yes. Councillor McPhail? Yes. Councillor Purcell? Yes. Councillor Martin? Yes. Councillor Jones? Yes. Councillor French? Yes. Here? Yes. Councillor Ketchabaugh? Yes. Mr. Warden? Yes. 9 0. The motion is carried. Thank you.
Motion to adopt recommendations from the Committee of the Whole. Need a mover, Jaguar. Jones. Jones. Thank you, call the vote. Deputy Warren Menno. Yes. Councilor McPhail. Yes. Councilor Purcell. Yes. Councilor Martin. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor French. Yes. Councilor Jaguar. Yes. Councilor Ketchbaugh. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. Nine zero, the motion is carried. Thank you. Consideration of bylaws. Need a first, second, and third read of bylaw 21-08 of being a bylaw to appoint a community emergency management coordinator for the county of Elgin. Moving by Menno, second by Jones. Call vote, please. Deputy Warren Menno. Yes. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Councillor Purcell. Yes. Councillor Martin. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor French. Yes. Councillor Jaguar. Yes. Councillor Ketchba. Yes. Mr. Warren. Uh, yes. Nine zero. The motion is carried. Thank you. Next one. Uh, be it a first, second, and third read of bylaw 21 09, being a bylaw to authorize the execution of a collective agreement between the Corporation of the County of Elgin and the Canadian Union of Public, Public Employees with respect to the Corporation's County Library employees. Moved by McPhail, second by Jaguar. Please call the vote. Deputy Warren Menno. Yes. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Councillor Purcell. Yes. Councillor Martin. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor French. Yes. Councillor Jaguar. Yes. Councillor Ketchbaugh. Yes. Mr. Warren. Yes. Nine zero. The motion is carried. Thank you. One more. We had a first, second, and third read of bylaw twenty one dash zero, being a bylaw to authorize tax exemption in respect of a municipal capital facility pursuant to section one ten of the municipal act. Need a mover, please. Purcell and Menel. Call the vote, please. Deputy Warren Menno. Yes. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Councillor Purcell. Yes. Councillor Martin. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor French. Yes. Councillor Jaguar. Yes. Councillor Ketchbaugh. Yes. Mr. Warden. Uh, yes. Nine zero. The motion is carried. Thank you. One more. At a first, second, and third read of bylaw twenty one dash one one, being a bylaw to confirm proceedings of the municipal council of the corporation of the county of Elgin. At the March 9th, 2021 meeting. Mover, please. French. French and Jones. Call the vote, please. Deputy yes. Warren Menno. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Purcell. Yes. Councillor Martin. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor French. Yes. Councillor Jaguar. Yes. Councillor Ketchbaugh. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. 9 0. The motion is carried. Thank you. I uh, coming up to a German before I go. Um, Marilyn, you make this job a whole lot easier. She continually kind of justice here and uh, it, I appreciate the help today. It, it, it just flew, flowed so smoothly for me. So thank you. Um, I think we're at the point of uh, adjournment. But Mental, second by Ketchabaugh. Please call the vote. One second. Deputy Warren yes. Metal. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Councillor Purcell. Yes. Councillor Martin. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor French. Yes. Councillor Chaguer. Yes. Councillor Ketchbaugh. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. Nine zero. The motion is carried. We are adjourned before we go. Thank you for your attendance and uh, participation. I think it was a good meeting. Thank you all. Stay safe. Someone's got another meeting shortly. But, uh, have a good one.